last seen nine days ago, 12 boys and their coach are trapped in the flooded caves. Hello? Hey. They're here. How many of you? 13. 13? They're all alive. Uh, can we go out now? I watched the film last night. It was really, really riveting. This is such a, obviously a well-known, well-documented, very recent story. When you came on board, what did you think you could sort of add to it? You know, like a lot of people, I was aware, aware of it and relieved by the outcome. And I sort of thought I knew the story, but when I read Bill Nicholson's script, I recognized that in his screenplay, and I sensed that perhaps beyond the screenplay, was this um, ensemble drama and adventure story about volunteerism and an array of really difficult, I'd say courageous choices. Some of them worked out, some of them didn't, by people beyond the epicenter where the physical crisis was being dealt with by the divers trying to get the kids out. It went so far beyond that. And I thought it also spoke to the culture as I began to understand Thai culture a little bit more. And I thought that was fresh and really worth dramatizing. And actors could bring that to audiences with more power than could ever sort of be described in a news story or a doc or a book. And so I felt like that was kind of the role of a, of a, of a dramatized version of real events is to, is to be visceral about it and emotional and and um you know and sort of reach people's nervous systems with with the the truth of the story and the spirit of the of the story what did you think a dramatization of the film could add to that story the film allows you if you do the right research to kind of humanize characters whereas a documentary goes a certain way towards that the dramatization of those things you know and and this film along with you know also i would say the documentary for sure allows people to understand details of the rescue that were kept out of the public eye when when that first went down for controversial reasons the mechanics of the rescue was sort of you know kept in the shadows and uh and i, th I think there's something really, really valid about ron's film in partnership with with say the rescue as a documentary it takes a certain kind of mindset for the deep cave diving you have to be a bit nuts they're very, very dangerous. At a high water level and a low visibility. Barely shoulder wide, pulling against very strong currents. What did they ask you to be mindful about, to be careful about in, uh, in dramatizing the story? Well, I was fortunate. They trusted me quite a bit because they liked Apollo 13 and they they like Rush and, and Beautiful Mind and other, other stories that I've done based on on real events. So I had that I had that advantage and they could see from the beginning that my own antenna was tuned toward integrity. I didn't want to amp things up, didn't need to. I felt like the facts that I was learning was going to be enough. But I also knew that as I started talking to people and go and going a little further, you know, we would discover things, you know, bringing paper to the kids so they could write letters to the parent. All these things just they reach us on a on a on a on an emotional level because they're just so logical. And yet within them kind of surprising. When you see the film, there's no sort of Hollywood histrionics in the film or over sentimentality about what went down. The tough thing is you're compressing so much information into one film keeping so many characters stories alive and paying tribute not just to what went down in the cave with the rescue with the british divers and the australian divers but the community at large and i talk about the global community of care that went in and the volunteerism from the people feeding anybody that was there to help all the way to what rick and harry did the the amount of people that were instrumental in in the care and rescue of those boys is i think paid tribute to in a very compressed version of of months of news events before i started watching it i was in the back of my mind like i'm a little afraid that this is going to come out with a white savior complex is that something you were conscious about yeah, it's tricky too because if you if if you're talking about just the rescue effort you know, and Saman, the Navy SEAL diver that lost his life, you know, is such a tragedy. And it also underlined 
the fact that you couldn't just teach these boys to dive. And now Rick and John and Harry, as ragtag bunches, they looked like, didn't look like a bunch of professional divers. And in fact, if you put them in a lineup, you might not pick them out as your stereotypical hero, but they were qualified. That's what they do in all of their spare time. Yes, and they were white, those guys, those particular handful of guys. But it wasn't just about them. And if they were there on their own, they wouldn't have achieved anything. You're talking about a five-hour dive. You try and dive those kids the whole way, all you'd be bringing out is dead bodies. The skill none of the rest of us have. No. It is such an extraordinary story, and I think there was an appetite to learn more about it. I mean, so how do you feel about the fact that 13 Lives is one of at least four competing projects at the moment? I factored that into my decision to make the movie. The more I read about it, and the more I start, began to talk to the divers and began to talk to others and looked at other documentaries, I looked at all this, and I just felt like, look, I'm going to have to collapse. I'm going to focus, but I'm going to dramatize. That's what I can do. That's what I can do with this. I can take people into those caves in a very visceral, cinematic way. I can dramatize these moments in a focused way so that people understand what those key turning points were. But I'm gonna have to also leave a lot out. This is a fascinating story. It goes on and on. I mean, it's frustrating to me what I had to leave out. So I think every book, every doc, every version of this is all valid. It's a, it's a tremendous story. It needs to be understood and celebrated. However that happens, it kind of makes me happy. I remember when it first happened, look, I'm a bit cynical and whenever there's a news event, particularly one that's either super tragic or one that is uh, incredibly positive, and this was obviously both, it started tragic and ended positive. I just sit there talking to friends and I'm like, there'll be a movie about that any minute now. I never imagined that I'd be part of it and I'm honored that I got to and that I got to play one of the coolest, um, people in the whole story um yeah I'm just, uh, but i think the more the merrier you know when you hear a great story in the pub or at a family event great stories perpetuate you want to tell them you want to pass them along and i think the fact that there are numerous projects about this is just a testimony to the fact that it's a great story and it's a story that reminds us particularly at the time that we've been going through that it's it's a show of what human beings are capable of when we get together. And I think that our core value is that we care and that we want to help and that we're human. And we see so many signs of the opposite every night when we watch the news or every day that we click on the computer. It's a great time to tell a story about when human beings are complicit about doing the right thing with each other. The, the impossible becomes possible. So you are expecting casualties? Yes. I expect casualties.